afternoon all. Well, no sooner had I started talking about people sending uh, stuff to each other, I came home this afternoon and uh, left in my front garden under an alloy wheel, which is my wife's spare wheel, which needs a new tyre, I find a box. It's a little bit soggy and sodden, so hopefully the contents are safe and sound. And this box is from Gimcock Piper, Mike Blocker. So as I'm in the workshop, we'll be using a box cutter, or here more commonly known as a Stanley knife, despite the fact that it's not a Stanley. Right. Now, uh, Mike and I have talked about um, I'm trying to remember which blend it was. I think it was perhaps a small batch that was released recently. Hi Simon, this obviously took way too long to send out. Thanks for being patient. I only bought three tins, so I'm sending you two. Thank you, Mike. But one is new and one is from last production run. Will be good to hear your comparison. Take care, Mike. Gamecock Piper, Mike. Thank you very, very much. Very generous of you. Let's have a look what we've got. Well, we do have some matches. Five points bottle shop, no fake ID, no crybabies. I like that. Definitely the no crybabies bit. Cool, we'll use those. <clears throat> Incidentally, somebody asked me about my watch. I'm not big into showing my watches on uh, on my videos, but this is the one, my daily driver, if you like. If we're going to use the terminology, um, I wear this watch nine times out of ten. It's a Seiko. Um, it's a kinetic diver. Let's see if I can find the movement number. Uh, it says on it 5M62 OBLO, whatever that means. So I used to be into watches quite uh, heavily, spent a lot of money on watches in the past, but any of my watches which have real value, I've sold on quite a long time ago. Um, I've had Omegas, I've had Tags, um, but um, you know, I find that with watches, first of all, it's all relative, you know, on your pocket, the size of your pocketbook, as they say. And uh, when you're into high end watches, each time you buy one, it's a lot of money. And that translates into possibly five or six pipes. Anywho. I stopped with the watches before I started pipes, so it wasn't really anything to do with that. Just the other priority in life, I guess. So, we have Cornell and Deal, small batch, San Sepulcro, something like that. So this is Italian dark fired, source from the San, San Sepulcro region of Italy, North Carolina, Red Virginia. So that's 2016, so that must be the previous one. And this is the same region it looks like. And this is the 2019 run. Yeah, it's the same stuff, but from 2019. I may have another one or two of these. I think somebody may have sent me, I'm not sure. I'll have to check. If I do have some more of this, then I'll certainly crack. Oh, we've got some more here. I certainly cracked that one open. What have you sent me here? Oh, nice. Some Wally Golden sliced. See Daisy. 2016. Awesome. Mike, super generous. Thank you very, very much indeed. Very, very, very generous of you. Thank you, Mike. Much appreciated. Natural fact, I'm pretty confident that I've got some more of this. So maybe I'll give this a crack. When is this from? It says 409.19, so that means April, because you guys do the month before the day, don't you? So April, that's really fresh. Mm, maybe I should leave it a bit. All right. But we could go with the uh, older version. I always like to think about cracking tins, especially if they're a little bit older, 
But um, I'm going to do you that uh, respect, Mike, and I'm going to crack this right here and now with you guys. wasn't intending to do this now, but uh, you asked me to do a comparison, Mike, so your wish is my command. Vintage blends, select hand blended. Oh, that's got a great, a great fruity aroma. There's the tobacco. It looks to me like it's a flake which has been rubbed out. Excellent humidity. I'm so used to the English uh, blends here being, you know, most of the time they're pretty sodden. Um, so I remember when I started smoking uh, First Responders by Cornell and Deal, which I really enjoyed um, at the time. Um, I haven't smoked it that much recently, but it's a really nice, easy-going vapor. Very smooth, very gentle. Um, and if you want a non-complicated vapor, then that's a great way to go. In fact, if you're looking for a way into vapors and you want something easy to, to easy way in, that's a great way to start. Is uh, Cornell and Deal First Responders? Anywho. I digress. This is ready to smoke straight away. So I brought a pipe out with me, and it is the Boswell, which I had re-drilled uh, for 9mm. And in fact, it wasn't just re-drilled, but uh, Marco at Moretti Pipes um, actually made me a new stem. All right. I haven't got any filters with me, but I do. So today I've come out to the garage, really wasn't really planning on making a pipe. I haven't really got much in the way of briar. Um, I do have some coming hopefully in about a week, a week and a half, something like that. So I'm looking forward to that big time. I'm sure you can hear the rain is going strong. Hmm. I think I took my tampering the last time I was out here. I do have this tamper which I finished not long ago, but I'm not going to use it. I'll probably send it off to somebody. This one. The idea of this was to kind of be a bit like a morella mushroom, um, you know, the way that's finished. I don't remember which wood this was made out of. It didn't give an extremely sort of polished finish, so I stained it quite dark to give that sort of deep, sort of mushroomy kind of look. It's all right. So these are the kind of blocks that I've got left. So relatively small blocks. So what I'll end up doing with those is something similar to the, the pot that I was smoking this morning. Just a really short stubby pipe. Um, probably won't be able to make uh, uh, nine mils out of those. So we'll see how we go. Well, I'm going to pause it and then give you my first impressions of this tobacco. Alright, so I've been smoking this for a few minutes. I am out in the garage, so I'm not really at my desk focused as I usually would be for a first impressions, but I'll give you uh, my early thoughts. I'll probably or possibly do another video at some point in the future. I would say that um, you definitely get uh, the sort of elements of McClellan coming through in terms of its uh, richness, um, sort of a, not quite a vinegary flavour, but certainly that clovey, spicy, uh, like Christmas pudding spicy kind of spices coming through, sweetness, a little bit of cinnamon, sweetness, definitely a bready note to it, which you'd get on something like Dunhill Flake, that kind of thing. Retro Hell is spicy. 
more and more um, I'm finding that um, the uh, retro hill is something which has to be good for me to enjoy a blend. And I'll tell you what, the retro hill on this one is very punchy, very peppery, quite chilly, but you can take it lightly. You don't have to retro hill that much, and you can just augment it. Or you can you can take in as much retro hill as much as you need to augment the flavours um, in the mouth. So it's really up to you. That's the beauty of uh, retro hailing. The retro hill, you get an initial little touch of sweetness, and then that blast of peppery. Um, that sharpness that goes through your nostrils when you retro hell. It's quite a full blend in the mouth as well. It's got a for me it's got a little bit of a harsh edge, or maybe a peppery edge, let me say. It's got quite a bit of heat in the mouth, quite a bit of a chili pepperiness. But not like that Kendall rabbit hutch bedding which uh, Mike sent us in channel, challenge number six. This has got far more finesse than that blend. Um, this one has um, sweetness, it has character, it has richness, it has the clovey spices in there as well, which go together with the, the chili. I would maybe dial back the chili heat on this a, a fraction, but it's really. It's it's not perfectly balanced, but it's almost there. And this is from 2016, so it's already had some uh, some age on it. Sorry, which one did I open? Oh, I thought I made a mistake and opened the wrong one. No, I did open this one. So this is October 16, nearly three years. Um, so that's still got a way to go in my view. Um, obviously the Italian um, Sansel Polcro is what's giving it the heat I think, it's giving it that spunk, um, the dark fired florets. It's, I'll just read this to you, merging the old world, world with the new Sansel Polcro is a very special entry into the small batch project, carefully blended from unique Italian dark fired florets and some of the finest red Virginias from North Carolina. Uh, aromatically spicy with earthy clove-like, uh, there you go, clove-like undertones. These florets will are all grown in the San Polcro region of Italy, which boasts a history and tradition of tobacco cultivating, cultivation in the 17th century. Combined with mellow citrus and bread-like notes of the reds, it makes for a wonderful melange of flavours and aromas, at once both familiar and exotic. Well, I get the familiar bit, you know, those bready notes, the spicy notes, the clovey notes, yes. Exotic, I don't know. Uh, I'm not getting exotic. I'm getting spicy. I'm getting heat. If that's what they mean by exotic, then yes, but This isn't exotic to me mm. That retro hell is killer it's a little bit too spunky for me to, to take a full retro hell as well. You know, and I go for retro hells big time, but this is really hot. It's got real chilly spunk to it. Mm. It's getting to the point that that chilly heat no longer complements and adds sweetness to the blend. It's really all about that chilly heat on the retro hell. This is a really full on blend. And it just shows you what the difference in, I don't know why that Kendall um, Dark Flake or whatever it was called that Mike sent, why that was so, uh, to me it was so unrefined, it was so brusque, it was so harsh, it was just a, a, a dirty tasting tobacco. And maybe it was just all, um, dried out, maybe it had lost its, uh, its kind of, its, its um, mojo if you like, um, and that was maybe just not typical of that blend, possibly. This one. It's heavy going, it's, it's um, full on, but there's lots of flavor in there. There's, it's good full on, but it's still too powerful for me. And that's saying something. I don't find a lot of tobaccos which are too, too powerful for me in fullness. In strength, yes, 
haunted bookshop would be too strong for me in strength in terms of nicotine but in terms of fullness and that kind of thing it doesn't bother me so much but this one is fullness fullness of flavor fullness of how it fills your senses in your mouth this is a very full-on blend I'm kind of intimidated now to try the 2019 version because if that's after three years, you know, obviously each crop can be different and maybe it's not as powerful, but that one might blow my socks off. I had originally came, come out here today to, to knock out a few tampers. Um, wasn't expecting to do a the first impressions but there you go you've had your first impressions i think it's uh, actually turned into a, a decent enough description of my first impressions of this so i won't need to do another one i don't think lots of smoke Let's have a look at that tobacco again let's just smell it again just set the pipe down It smells glorious, it really does. You can see the quality of the tobacco there. You really can. I'm a bit hard pressed to identify the different components. Obviously there are some lighter areas and slightly darker areas, but it's all fairly light colored, really attractive. And um, there's definitely um, a sort of a flake type element to this, without a doubt. And you have a look at, I don't know if you can see this, if we can get it to focus. Excuse my dry hands there, you can see that's that's a bit of a flake there. It's got a very apricot -y, fruity, sort of a ripe apricot kind of aroma. This reminds me actually of an older vintage tin of the Dunhill Navy Rolls, the one which I had, uh, one of the first tins of Navy Rolls that I ever tried, I think it was from 2010, um, and that's a very similar aroma, and in fact to get an aroma like that on a three-year-old tin, I think that's a, I think that's an achievement. It speaks to the quality of the tobacco and the processing that it's been through. So I will uh, leave it there, I hope that gives you a bit of an impression of, of that blend. And um, I'm a bit loath to open the other one. I know you wanted a back-to-back, -back, uh, well, not necessarily a back-to-back, -back, but a comparison. Um, and having a whole tin to go through, um, I'll probably share this out if anybody wants to try some of this, especially if you're in the UK. Um, I'd be more than happy to, to send some samples out. Um, and uh, maybe we will try this one. We'll see. I'm just a bit loath to do that whilst that one is sort of still full. Um, and I'm uh, always all for, you know, dedicating stuff for the YTPC, but that's, uh, you know, it's the same blend after all. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks again, Mike. I'll catch you on the next one.